Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, put a new handle on that old knife. Have you got a knife that you like but that you wish had a different handle? Maybe you want it to look different or maybe the handle on the old blade's worn out or maybe you just want it to feel different. Hey, maybe you're even interested in knife making but you don't really know where to start. Well, today we got a great project that fits the bill for all of that and doesn't take a whole bunch of fancy equipment. Today, I'll show you how to take a handle off of an existing knife and then put a new one on. So in lieu of using an old knife, I'm starting with a prototype of my new Tactics Armory Slimline blade. Now there's nothing wrong with the knife, but it got a little bunged up while I was testing some things out. So I figured I'd put a sweet looking new handle on it. So let's talk first about how knife handles are attached to blades. Most modern blades are what we call full tang knives, meaning that you can see metal all the way around the handle. Then the scales, those are the handle pieces, are you know stacked or pinned or whatever on top of that and sandwich that metal in the middle. Could be a screw, could be a pin, could be other things, um, but we'll need to take those off and then we can put the new one on. So obviously if it's a screw, you just need to unscrew it and remove the old handle scales. Now there may be thread locker and in that case you'll need to heat the blade up with a heat gun or maybe even a small burns o -matic torch or something like that, propane torch. But in a case like this, the one that we'll be doing today, uh, where I use tube rivets, you'll need to get rid of the head of the rivet. You can carefully cut on the bias with a hacksaw. Just don't go crazy and run into the tang. And this little sliver right here is the top of the rivet. That's all you need to get it off. After you've gone all the way through, you'll need a punch to knock it out the other side. You can find punch sets at any big box hardware store, but you can improvise one out of an old bolt or something if you don't have one. Or here's a slightly quicker alternative. If you have an angle grinder, just grind the head off. In either case, just go easy so you don't grind into the knife. And we'll bang that one out too. Now, in some cases, you may have an adhesive on the scale too. A few sideways taps with a hammer will usually break it free. If not, you can hammer a thin knife into the gap between the tang and scale, then pry it off. Now, if you like the condition your knife is in as is, you can just proceed to putting the new handle on. But, if the blade's old and rusty, or you just don't like the finish, you can always spiff it up by sanding everything until it's pretty. You can use any sort of flat surface to do this. I've showed this kind of thing in tons of other videos, so I won't go into too much detail here. Link in the cards to a variety of those videos. In this case, I'm going to cheat and use my grinder off camera, but how you do it or whether you skip it all together is up to you. You can buy pre-cut knife scale blanks online from a zillion different materials, including micarta, carbon fiber, wood, bone, G10, plastic, stabilized wood, horn. The possibilities are limitless. For this project, I'm going upscale. A Patreon supporter and longtime follower of the channel, Paul Kessler, sent me a box of stabilized wood handle scales. In this case, I'm going to use a piece of stabilized elm burl. Stabilizing is a process of impregnating natural materials with a plastic resin kind of stuff which hardens and fills some gaps in the wood, making it less likely to crack, expand, chip, and do all the other stuff that natural materials tend to do. 
obviously depending on what you use and what condition it's in when you buy it, you may be able to skip a bunch of the steps I'll show here. But the overall process will be pretty similar whether you're using fossilized giraffe bone or a piece of plastic chopped out of an old Buick dashboard. I'll begin by splitting the wood. Now I have all kinds of fancy tools. If you do too, I encourage you to use them to save time. But if all you have is an old handsaw, not a problem. If you want to use a man-made material like micarta, just skip this step. Now we've split our blank into two scales. I did a crap job of sawing these, but even if I hadn't, we'd still need to flatten them. I'll do this by taping sandpaper to a flat surface and going at it until it's flat. You want these to lie absolutely dead flat to the tangs with no gaps. Check out a video on making things flat that I did recently if you really want to dig into the flatness subject. You can use sandpaper in the 60 to 120 grit range or even start with 40 if you want. Just bear in mind that if you use a really, really heavy grit sandpaper, it's going to tend to scoop the edges, so just be careful. The key point here is that you want to vary both the motion that you use and the pressure you put on the wood. If you don't, it'll dish out whatever part of the wood is getting the most pressure and you'll never be able to flatten it properly. Check it by using a ruler or even just by holding both pieces together and looking through toward the light. If light goes through that gap, you still need to keep flattening. At some point, you'll need to trim off the excess to fit the scales closer to your knife, but wait until everything's flat to do that. Once everything's nice and flat, I'll get the scales ready to put on the knife. You'll need a pin that fits through the existing holes. In this case, I'm using quarter inch brass rods for these quarter inch holes, but you can use any sort of material that fits the hole correctly. There are also specialized cutlery rivets and things like that, but this is the simplest way to pin a handle. First, I'll mark the general layout. One thing you always have to be aware of is which side the scales go on, as well as which is inside and which is outside. I like to mark everything because screwing this up and turning something around and getting it out of orientation, it can be back to the drawing board. Hey guys, let me jump in quickly to mention that if you're enjoying these videos, I hope you'll help the channel on Patreon. Click the card or follow the link down here to see how it works. Now I try to make a wide range of videos so that no matter where you are in your knife making journey, I've got something that's going to help you. Now some of these are complicated projects and some use really simple tools and techniques and some are aimed at building your base of skills and your knowledge. Now one of the things you'll notice about my videos is that you get plenty of detailed close-ups, all kinds of different angles to see what you're doing, um, you know, good lighting, and let me tell you, if you've done any video, you'll know that this takes just lots and lots of time. That's time that I take away from my family, from making knives, from doing other things that put food on my table. So if you want more videos like this, as well as access to plans of many of my projects, Help yourself out by helping the channel. Thanks, and now let's get back to work. I'll be drilling the rivet holes next. When you do this, it's really important to have them as perpendicular to the handle as possible. Ideally, you'll want to use a drilling vise and a drill press. If you don't have either of those, you can get by without as long as you follow the same sequence as I do. If you get out of sequence, you can end up having holes that don't mate up properly, which puts you into the do-over from scratch mode. Using a straight edge, I'll make sure that my scale is completely flat to the vise jaw. If you don't have a vise, you'll want to shim the piece so that it's nice. If you don't have a vise, you'll want to shim the piece so it's nice and square to the spindle of your drill press. It's almost inevitable, unless you bought the scales pre-made, that it'll be anywhere from a lot to a little out of true. Now I'll drill the first hole. Now I'll put a pin in that location so that we can be assured that the next hole will line up correctly. And we drill hole number two, removing the blade after the hole's established so it doesn't catch and spin around, 
then finish the hole. Now we'll flip it over and repeat the process again on the second scale. I'm drilling through both the tang and the other scale. With a drill press and a vise, this is a belt and suspenders approach and not necessary, but if you don't have a vise or a press, it's absolutely critical that you do this. If you don't, the holes will almost inevitably be out of parallel and then your pin won't fit through the handle. The front portion of the scale has to be finished before installation, so I'll mark it, saw it, and then sand it to shape, giving it a little bit of radius. If you don't do this now, you'll be stuck having to try and finish it after installation which will guarantee you of scratching the crap out of your blade. And that's it. Now I'll trim the excess using a saw. If you have a band saw or scroll saw or fret saw, something similar to that, you can do this more easily and accurately, but this approach works fine. And here's the result. I'm using a pair of brass pins cut from this brass rod that you can buy at any hobby store. After cutting and deburring on a piece of coarse sandpaper, I'll clean off the oxides. This will help the adhesive bond better when we assemble our blade. Before assembling everything, I'll clean and degrease the blade thoroughly so the blade will adhere properly to the epoxy. Before assembly, I always try to run through my assembly process in my mind, making sure that all the parts fit correctly and are oriented so that I won't do something dumb by mistake. 27% of knife making is just making sure that you don't do stupid things. I've got all my parts, a hammer, clamps, and so on, ready to go. Now it's time to assemble using two-part epoxy. and clamps and I'll clean up squeeze out with paper towels and a very sparing amount of rubbing alcohol. After leaving the epoxy to cure I'll clamp up the blade and start whittling down the handle to its final shape. The process begins using a rasp Thank <laughs> you. 
you can turn the rasp around and work from the other side or turn the knife around as you go. When I hit the metal of the pins, I'll switch over to a file as the rasp doesn't really play nice with brass. Notice that I'm always driving the rasp toward the metal, not toward the wood. Rasps are basically big files made for wood. They can rip out serious chunks of wood if you aren't careful. So work toward the direction where the wood is best supported, in this case, toward the metal. Once I start getting close to the steel, I'll stop. Hardened steel will ruin your file in a heartbeat. Then it's on to sandpaper. I start by laying it on my flat aluminum plate. I'll also use this piece of round plastic to work my way into this finger groove. If you're working a knife that has a bird's beak on the end, you can use the same technique there, just switching to a dowel or whatever with a radius small enough to get you all the way inside the radius of the groove. You can also use it to bevel or round the edges of the finger groove. I'm canting the blade a little to round the handle off. There's no formula for how rounded a handle should be. Do it however you like so it feels and looks good to you. As I make progress, I'll switch to progressively finer and finer sandpaper. In this case, I'm going up to 600 grit. Eventually, I'll switch to holding the sandpaper in my hand, resulting in a smoother, more blended finish than is possible when using a hard backing for the sandpaper. Next, I'll finish the wood. I always like to test my finish on a piece of scrap wood before applying it to the knife. Some finishes look muddy or blotchy or overly dark on particular types of wood, and you just really never know until you see it. Here I'm using tongue oil, so I'm just applying it with a shop towel. After a bunch of applications, I'll buff it out. And there you are, from here to here. Incidentally, if you like the design of this particular knife, occasionally I sell pre-made blanks on my tacticsarmory.com website. 
So if you're interested in trying one of these for yourself, check the website. I've got a tab there for special items, things like that, and it'll be listed in that area. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this project and want to step up to something a little more ambitious, I've got a bunch of videos that focus on making knives using very simple tools and equipment. So check the cards for links to some of those videos. Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Link's in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!